I'm joined now by Ono Steinbeck. He is Professor of Finance at Erasmus University. He's been talking to delegates today about the Dutch pension experience. Ono, thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank just you. Just to start off with, uh, tell us a little bit about the Dutch pension landscape overall. How mature an industry is it? It is uh, big. That's the main thing. So within Europe, it's uh, by far the biggest in terms of assets under management and also coverage. Uh, so it has been doing very well. It has been very successful. Over the past 100 years, we've just celebrated 100 years of pension provision in the Netherlands in an organized way. Um, so that's, uh, in general, so a very mature system, I would say. Well, thinking of that as a, as a huge stream of data and anecdote and so forth, um, what would you say some of the, the positive lessons that, as you look back over the history of it, you've learned? If you were putting a pension uh, administration or pension scheme together today, well, yeah, the, 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 one of the main reasons why the Dutch system is as big and success as it has been, as it is, uh, is that we started early. So that's difficult to, uh, to copy, right? Yeah. So it was a stroke of um, luck or, or some foresight by politicians to actually establish a system very early on. And having this mixture of, on the one hand, the pay-as-you-go system that covers the basics, so everyone has an income, and um, uh, uh, an employer-related pension, which is mandatory. And that's another element in the Dutch system which has proven to be very successful. So if you are a civil servant, you don't have a choice. You save for your pension quite significantly uh, for all your career. We've been hearing a lot at the conference today about demographics. Obviously, right. a lot of younger people coming through in Africa, in the more yeah. developed societies, it's not the case at all. I, what are the pros and cons of a pay-as-you-go system? Um, yeah. Because there must be times when that demographic bulge is in your favor and times when right. it's really against you. Well, that, that part of the Dutch system was introduced right after the Second World War, when we had the baby boomers that were all able to uh, well, grow in, an, in a growing economy but that was very supportive of providing pensions in general to, uh, to the people who had, um, let's say, got us there. Um, so that's, 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 um, that's, that's one element. And in the pay-as-you-go system, um, you are extremely sensitive to aging trends that we have in Europe. So we see now that when it was established, it was about eight workers for one pensioner. And now if we had not changed the retirement age, it would have been less than mm -hmm. two for yeah. each uh, retiree. So that's, that's just unaffordable. But changing it is political suicide. If you say, well, you can only retire when you're 70, then you can forget about re-election. But that's a big, big issue. Well, I was gonna say, obviously systems have to flex and change over time. So right. how do you, in the Netherlands, make sure there's that conversation with the wider public and with scheme members so that they've got a transparent view of what's happening and what, what realistic options are for them? Well, it takes a lot of time and effort, and it takes a crisis in order to uh, get things moving. So I just talked about the first pillar, but this conference obviously is for the second pillar. And um, uh, so more of these capital-based, asset-based uh, pension uh, systems. And if you're going to change something, people will be very, very suspicious. So why are you changing something? I will probably get less, or I get more risk, um, and I will pay for things myself. It will be less certain um, so you have to take along all the stakeholders. You cannot take along every individual, obviously, but you can find representatives, either in politics or the labor unions or employer uh, organizations that all have their interests, all have a say in this discussion. Mm. Uh, but it took 15 years and a crisis to get things going. We've talked a bit about the history of the schemes in, in, in the Netherlands, some of the positives there. What are one or two of the things that you'd say to anybody, don't copy us on this, it, it didn't go right? Well, we overpromised a little bit. So we um, said you get an indexed uh, for a, a, a pension that um, compensates price inflation or even wage inflation, which is even higher, until the end of time. And that is uh, very ambitious, especially now. So pension funds in the Netherlands, most of them, have been unable to provide that over the past 15 years, all, all the way since 2008. Um, so that's, that's something. Be very careful before you start over-promising. And 
we have always communicated to plan members, just everything will be okay, we will be taking care of your pensions, don't worry about it, until the crisis said, well, hey, something is not going well, so forget about the indexation. And even with inflation spiking to 10%, we were not going to compensate you for that. And you don't tell me, tell me but we say, well, yeah, look at the small letters in the contract, mm. that is not going well. So honest communication and, um, well, under promise and over deliver, those are two elements that I would, uh, I would go for. We have to leave it there. Okay. Arno Steinbeck, thank you so much for joining us. More than welcome. Thank you.